Welcome back to the VBTeacher.com for Section 5 of the Breakout Project. In this part we'll be uh, adding several rows of bricks to the pro project and we should be able to have a fairly functional program when we're done. We hope you enjoy the fun. Um, up there at the top of the screen to play our game with. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is to uh, to delete our one brick that we have. I guess I need to stop my program. De to delete my one brick that we have and remove the one the one line from the program that involves that brick. There is one line in the program that uses the word brick in it and it's in here right down here and we'll put a highlight uh, we'll put a comment on that. We'll come back and add something there later. Now we need some variables at the beginning of the program that we can use to build our array. We need to specify the size of the array and we're going to do some looping. Uh, for those of you that are new to programming entirely, looping is when we do a series of uh, repeated lines of code uh, so many times each. Okay. Um, so first we're going to dim the number of rows as integer equals and let's start it with say 10. Well, let's go 8. A dim calls as integer equals 10, so there'll be 80 bricks. Uh, dim uh, top row as single equals 0.1, so that will be one tenth of the way down the form. There'll be a little bit of space above them. Uh, we're going to dimension the row height as, and so let's stop and think here, we have eight rows and uh, so if we make those 0.05 single equals 0.05, so uh, 1 20th of the height of the form, same as the height of the uh, of the paddle at the bottom, or the bat at the bottom, would be that. And uh, now with all those set, we have a game that we can set up with a fixed number of rows and columns. Um, we, need to write a, we need to write a sub that will build those bricks on the screen. And so now, uh, when we begin to run the program, one of the very first thing that happens is that we go to a place called load. And this is actually the form load event. And the form load event happens just once before the form, form ever loads. And it uh, is a good place to put an initialization routine such as this. And so we're going to make bricks. And uh, make bricks is going to be our sub that we're going to build here to put the bricks in their, in their rows and columns. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's build a sub called make bricks, private sub make bricks. That way if we need to restart the game we can call it from somewhere else. Alright, now we're going to loop through uh, once for each row and each column. And uh, so now what we're going to do is this for um, each row uh, for r as integer equals 0 to rows minus 1 for c as integer equals 0 to calls minus 1 and we'll number them 0 to, zero to the number of rows and columns each and so that we'll get one row and one column each time we go through this loop. Now we're going to have to uh, each time through here we're going to have to position and create a new a new brick. So dim b as new button Okay, so we've created a new button and we have to add it to the uh, desktop's list of controls. So me.controls.add b. Okay, and then we have to make it visible. b.visible equals true. So now it's on the screen and it's visible. Now it is doesn't have a back color or a size or anything, so we need to set the width and the height. So so b dot width is equal to uh, me dot client rectangle uh, dot width over the number of columns. B dot height equals me dot client rectangle dot height times I think I call that row height, row height. And 
now we have the row and the height, uh, the width and the height of that uh, particular thing done there. Okay, now we can uh, we have to position it. So b dot left is equal to. Now we're going to use the column number. So c zero two c times uh, b dot width. So the width of the current brick, and they're all the same width. And then b dot top is equal to, what's my top row? Okay, I'm going to take uh, the top row. Where'd I go? Um, me dot client rectangle dot height times top row. Okay, that'll give me how high the top row is, plus the row number times the row height times me dot client rectangle dot height and uh, I could actually factor out that client rectangle and so we'll do times and then we'll just take it out of here and we'll add these two together and take this one out we factor that out just like in math class so it's the top row plus r times row height and that will be a, dig a decimal in here for example, the top row is 0.1 and the row height is 0.05 times the row, and so that'll give us a number from 0.1 up to about 0.5 times the client rectangle height. Now we don't have a color yet, so let's give these a color. B dot back color equals red, and let's see if they run. Now we aren't going to have these things functioning yet because we haven't checked to see that they were uh, working yet. So let's see what we can do here. Save our project and uh, run it. It might show up with a bunch of bricks and rows and it may not. We'll find out in a minute here. Ooh, that actually looks pretty good. That has a row, uh, it has a bunch of rows and a bunch of columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight by ten wide. And so there's an array of bricks. That's not bad for the first try. Um, we now need to have the program check all of those and see if they are um, have been hit or not each time th that we move the mouse, uh, move the ball. So now, with the bricks all made, uh, we need to go back into the the uh, animation routine, the timer one tick, and right here where we checked the bricks before, we need to loop through all of the things in the control area. Um, now, how do we know which ones are there, uh, which ones are bricks, and which ones are balls, and which ones are paddles? Because they're all buttons. So there's a couple of things we could do here, and one of those is when we create the bricks, we could give them a, a name property and call them a brick. And so right in here somewhere, we're just going to say b.name equals brick. Anything with a name that is, says brick is going to be a brick and so that will be enough to identify them up here. So we'll say this, if, uh, we'll do for each, uh, c as control, in me.controls, that'll loop through all the buttons, and then we're going to uh, check to see if it has the word brick in its name. If c.name equals brick, then what we're going to do is check the brick and something like that. Check brick and uh, C and then the ball is the thing that we're checking with the brick and so that will that will see uh, see if that works. It looks like I'm using C twice so let's use a, a CNT CNT CNT. I didn't want to use C twice. Okay so CNT I used a variable twice and it gave me a wavy line under it and I used that to catch the fact that I had used it twice. Now this will go through and uh, it will allow us to bounce off all the bricks but it still doesn't shut them off. In order to shut them off we have to do a little bit of work um, down inside the routine where we check the bricks and, and we have to turn them off if they get hit. So what we want to do here is is uh, in here we want to say dim hit as boolean equals false and uh, then any time we uh, we actually bounce uh, the ball off of a brick we have to say hit equals true and so we know that we've had a hit anywhere in here we'll put that in each of the four sides of every brick test here that we do 
and uh, that will tell us that we've had a hit. And if we have a hit, uh, if hit, then brick visible equals false. Now there's one more thing that's very important, and that is we don't want to check any brick that's been uh, already hit. So we want to check every one of these things as it comes in. If brick dot visible, then check it, and go to the very end and put in end if. And there we go. And now, there we have all that. And we run it. And here we go. Is it going to start breaking bricks? Oh my goodness, it almost looks like the program's done. Not bad. Now those bricks have some rather, rather rough looking edges here. Their coloring is not great. We could do some things with that. But actually, this isn't too far off the mark. We have red bricks and a red ball, and that's not maybe the best color coordination, but it's working. Uh, now you guys can go off and have some fun yourselves, and I'll sit here and play this game for about the next hour here while I try to test everything out and make sure it's all working just swell. I'd like to break out, though, through that little hole up there, and maybe I can yet. I don't know. See, I can control this a little bit by its uh, by having the corner of the... can't talk very well when I'm playing this game here. So anyway, there we go. And uh, now we've actually made a semi-functional game. We don't have any scoring yet, but it's actually working. And you can play this yourself for a little bit and tell the teacher you're just testing the program. And so there you have it. We're going to come back in a little bit and uh, add some scoring and maybe change the design of the bricks a little bit and get a little grid-looking thing going on here. And uh, thanks for programming along with us.